amigos, coming up in this episode we have... Ella era de mucho dinero, de mucho poder. Esta fue la zona donde se grabó la, la filmación de diario de motocicleta. El cuerpo de bomba sí, sí, sí tira agua todavía, pero eh, hay una fuga y unas cosas por el tema de, de los años, las bombas se van a adaptar. Now I realized that yesterday I had been looking for the correct building but in the wrong town and they killed him by pouring the molten gold down his throat ridiculing him and saying here maybe this will quench your insatiable thirst for gold So I'm in the camping grounds of San Manuel where I just spent only my second night in my cheap two man tent which is really only a one man tent <laughs> uh, it was a bit cold Uh, but anyway, set off early in the morning. I had quite a few kilometers of dirt road ahead of me before I rejoined the Panamericana. It was a bit bumpy, but it wasn't too bad. And I couldn't really get lost because it was the way I came last night. Then I saw two men on horseback and they stared at me <laughs> and I waved and said hello but they looked at me like I was some sort of alien, didn't wave back or anything. Finally at the town of Paral I was back on the Panamericana or Ruta Cinco Sur as it's called in Chile. And then I saw something I wasn't expecting, this building. I guess it's something to do with grain handling or storage, but it does look like it's something out of Chernobyl or something, I don't know. <laughs> Next there was this really long bridge called the Puente Nuble over the Rio Nuble. I actually pulled up in the middle and shot a 16 image panorama here, which turned out okay. I guess that's the railway bridge that runs parallel. Next was the town of Los Angeles. Los Angeles, Chile, of course. <laughs> I had two reasons to pull in here. One was to buy a new mirror, which I broke yesterday at the Rio Maule. The other reason I stopped here was to see if I could find the fire station where Che Guevara and Alberto Granado slept during their infamous 1952 motorcycle trip. I had a description of it being a tall, pale blue building, but the first three people I asked at a petrol station had no idea what I was talking about. At this motorcycle accessory shop, however, I was able to buy a new mirror and the man behind the counter gave me rapid fire directions. Shortly after I took this photo, the man behind the counter came out and called over a mechanic in overalls and they had a hearty laugh at me and at Wacky. I expect I will get a lot more of those now that I have mismatched mirrors, but hey, it's safer than no mirror. I spent half an hour looking around for the fire station, but as I only half understood their directions and I was in a bit of a hurry, I gave up and headed back out to the Panamericana. Just a few kilometers down the road, I had reason to stop because my bike was about to clock up 5,000 kilometers. There's the GPS coordinates if you want to dig up a, a limited edition Australian 20 cent piece. <laughs> Next I saw a sign that said Mirador, which means lookout, and what looked like a rest area with picnic tables and, and things for kids to climb on, so I thought I'd check it out and stretch my legs. Now this viewing platform says there are three volcanoes all over 2,800 meters in altitude visible from this point. But they were a little bit hard to make out, but there's one. And if I up the contrast, you'll be able to see it quite clearly. Looks like a perfect volcanic cone, even has snow on it. Looks kind of isolated, a bit like my overpacked bike in the parking lot, <laughs> isolated and lonely. Better go back, jump on her and keep riding south. Then I was passing another town called Lautoro. The town gets its name from a Mapuche warrior called Lautaro. He was kidnapped at age 11 by Pedro Valdivia and employed as a page. Being in such a position, he learned the Spanish language, he learned the Spanish military tactics, and he learned how to use horses and even cannons and firearms. A common atrocity meted out by the conquistadors was the cutting off of the hands and feet of the Mapuche warriors. And the chronicles say they did that to Lautaro's parents. So he hated the conquistadors, he hated Valdivia, and he just waited the time to escape, which he did at some point in the early 1550s. Back amongst his people, he taught them not to fear the horses, forming mounted cavalry squadrons, and actually formed a Mapuche army that used Spanish tactics against the Spanish. He made some of his guides sleep during the day, so their eyes were never exposed to the sun, so they could see better at night. One of the more curious uh, tactics that he used was shaking the branches of trees as a form of code to communicate without making a sound when the Spanish were passing through the forest. Eventually, on Christmas Day, 1553, Lautaro, at the head of a massive army, ambushed Pedro Valdivia y the Conquistadors in the Battle of Tucapel, which is less than 180 kilometers northeast of here. 
Every one of the Spanish was killed. Pedro de Valdivia and his priest were able to temporarily escape on horseback, but they got bogged down in a swamp and the Mapuche captured them. There are various conflicting accounts about how Pedro de Valdivia died. One says they tortured him for three days, cut out his beating heart and ate it. Another one says they made a drinking cup from his skull. Another says they cut off his forearms, roasted and ate them in front of him before killing him and the only other survivor up until that time, his priest. Another chronicle says they held him and brought a crucible of molten gold and they killed him by pouring the molten gold down his throat ridiculing him and saying, here, maybe this will quench your insatiable thirst for gold. <coughs> Lautaro is also the town where Che Guevara and Alberto Granado got their motorbike repaired way back in 1952. I went to a dance later that night in the dance hall and got into a big fight and had to run for their lives. <laughs> My research told me the dance hall still exists, but it's late in the day. I'm in a hurry due to winter closing in on Patagonia, so I just kept riding. Now, early in the day, I had seen two very bad accidents involving overturned trucks, big ones. And today I was almost in an accident, but not with a truck. I turned off the highway a few kilometres past Temuco, looking for a place to spend the night. On one of these side roads, I passed a parked lorry. From nowhere, a soccer ball came bouncing out across the road, a teenager chasing after it. For the first time in 5,000 kilometres, I had to hit the brakes hard. I missed him by about a foot. But he had a smile on his face and he didn't even look up at me even though I squealed the brakes. He picked up the ball and ran back to his game. A bit further down the road, at the town of Freire, I had to buy petrol. After the attendants had stopped laughing at my bike, <laughs> I asked them if there were any lodgings in this town. None that they knew of, they said, and directed me to Villarica, the next large town. Reluctantly, I turned back towards the Panamericana. At the very next corner, as I was about to rejoin the highway, I saw a sign that said, Hosteria Rucantu. And guess what? They had a room for me and secure parking for my bike. There was just enough light for me to go out and explore a little bit of the town. This boarded up supermarket looked like it had seen better days, but at the same time, in its own way, it looked kind of proud and defiant of the elements. In contrast to this modern looking supermarket, the temperature started dropping rapidly, but back in the Hosteria Rucantu, a wonderfully warm cast iron heater was blazing away. And they served me this delicious dish called Cazuela de Ave. Literally translated, that means bird casserole. <laughs> I started reading a newspaper called La Tercera, and two stories piqued my interest. One was an article by Peruvian Nobel Prize winner Mario Vargas Llosa. It was called The Gay Hunt, about the Daniel Zamudio case that I talked about in a previous episode. The other article was about how Chile and Peru are at a flashpoint about demining the border up at Tacna Arica, which I also spoke about in a previous episode. According to the Chileans, the Peruvians were complicating the demining by making a provisional on resolving an old land border dispute. Anyhow, that's way behind me. Today I covered 422 kilometers. Time to hit the sack. But not before talking to the owner of the hostel, Senor Pedro Matas Cofre. When I told him that the service station there told me there was no accommodation in the town, he laughed and said, those people are new in this town. When I told him I rode around Los Angeles and had skipped Lautaro, missing the opportunity to see the buildings linked to Che Guevara, Pedro just happened to mention that he had a load of actors booked in his hotel a while back who were employed on the film The Motorcycle Diaries. None of them were the stars, obviously. Many were local residents, and one or two of them were good friends of his. Sensing my interest, he promised to show me something interesting tomorrow that would make up for my previous Che Lacunas, and that he did. Breakfast table was preset for an early rise and the blazing wood stove ensured the entire dining room was warmed up. A good thing as it looked very cold and foggy outside. Pedro took me to this blue building, dated 1940. It's the Cuartel de Bomberos, or the fire station. Inside Pablo introduced me to his friend Javier, a fireman who was here many years ago when this building had its 15 minutes of fame. Bueno, esta fue la zona donde se grabó la, la filmación de diario de motocicleta. En esta zona fue donde el personaje bajaron después de, una, de, una, de un altercado que tuvieron acá en este salón. Esto representó la, lo que era la municipalidad antigua en, este, en, este, en esta zona. ¿ya? Aquí eh, tuvo un altercado arriba, bajaron y se fueron por todo este sector hasta la esquina. Gael García. Gael García Bernal. Gael García. Bueno, más que nada, el, aquí en esta zona se grabó alrededor de 40 veces el, solo la escena donde, donde salían arrancando después de la discusión que tuvieron acá arriba. El... Bueno, el lugar se seleccionó por, 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 lo, 
por lo parecido que era la estructura a los años que, que se firmó. Bueno, ellos cuando llegaron acá, cuando llegó la productora, ellos se encargaron de remodelar un poco acá, arreglar más o menos que quedara la, a la zona, colocaron el escenario ese, el eh, piano. Okay. Con este piano es eh, una donación que le hicieron a nuestro cuerpo bombero. Este piano cuando se firmó la película eh, del diario de motocicleta, el, la productora andaba con un, con un ingeniero en música que fue el, el que afinó este piano para que sonara, sonara normal. Pues ya por los años estaba descontinuado. ¿no? Pero una vez que, que firmaron la película, cuando tocaron las canciones que bailaron acá, lo hicieron con, con este, con este, con este piano. Ahora voy a servir. Claro, ahora ya está un poco... <risa> So here the dance scene was filmed in one of my favorite films of all time. ¿Y, y los bomberos no trabajaron este día? ¿o? No, o sea, igual habían algunos bomberos que participaron del, de la filmación, pero haciendo otras cosas. Había unos que estaban preocupados del tema del, del vestuario, otros del tema de, de la iluminación, de la logística, nada más, nada más eso. But downstairs there was another surprise. I don't know what make it was, but it had wooden floorboards. ¿Y qué fue eso? Bueno, este, este camión de bomberos es de la época de la película. Eh, este camión fue eh, destinado a la ciudad de Lautaro. Y allá, en el cuartel de bomberos de esa ciudad, se firmó con, con el camión del cuerpo de bomberos Frey. Con la moto se puede quedar aquí. Muchas gracias, muchas gracias. Muchachos, cañaco, venga. Te voy a presentar. Uh. Bueno, gracias. Ah, pues. Those seats look like they've just been reupholstered. ¿Y cómo inicia eso, moto? ¿Sí? sí. Bueno, este, este carro bomba, en esos en eso años se echaba a andar con, con manivela, una manivela que se conectaba en la parte de adelante y el motor automáticamente andaba. Era un poco pesado para, para echar a andar, pero funcionaba. ¿Y todavía está en servicio? Ahora la, el tema de la manilla lo dejamos a un lado, le cambiamos una pieza y funciona con, con arranque. Pero para, para poner agua en fuegos, ¿sirve todavía? Eh, el cuerpo bomba sí, sí, sí tira agua todavía, pero eh, hay una fuga y unas cosas por el tema de, de los años, las bombas se van gastando. Now I realized that yesterday I had been looking for the correct building, but in the wrong town. Now, look at that date, 1940. And look at the placement of the windows. The exterior of this building, as well as the interior, was cast as the Lautaro Town Hall. Pedro wanted to show me something else, something behind that sinister brick wall, something he said was rumored to be haunted when he was a kid. And this place did come as a complete surprise. Los alemanes, hecho eso? Y los alemanes hicieron esto hace muchos años. Ahora los, eh, está a cargo de los hijos, de los hijos de los colonos alemanes. Y ahora ellos está a esto a la venta. Los padres de ellos eh, cuidaban mucho, esto era muy precioso. Tenemos ahí atrás un parque con flor y fauna chilena y extranjera. Ella era de mucho dinero, de mucho poder y traían animales exóticos que se aclimataban a nuestra zona, a la zona sur. ¿Y, y cuántos años es eso? ¿Cómo... Esto tiene de, de, de 1850, o sea, lo que yo, lo que yo sé que es de 1850 hacia adelante. Mm. Aquí vivieron muchas generaciones, como tres o cuatro generaciones de, Toro, alemán. de alemanes. Familias muy grandes. Esta zona de muchos alemanes. Alemán, suizo, 
Freire es una es la comuna inter, intercultural. Porque llegaron muchos colonos. ¿no? Next, Pablo showed me around this old railway station. He said the roof was clad in copper sheeting, but it was hard to tell in the fog. This warehouse must date back a very long time. The sign says it was used to store salitre, saltpeter, and that industry collapsed just before World War II. Pedro had one more surprise in store in the town plaza. That is the leaning tower of Freire. He said this rotunda started tilting after it was built on the grounds of a former sawmill. The builders apparently built half of it on solid ground, the other half was sawdust, and it started sinking. <laughs> Pedro offered to take me to meet a friend of his who had a small part in the film, but reluctantly I had to decline his offer, as I am already way behind schedule and wanted to hit the road south. This fog coming in, if that's any indication of what lies ahead in Patagonia, I have to leave today. And that's all for now, amigos, but coming up in the next episode, we have... I think that's an early Dodge Lancer. What the hell is that? I think this is going to be interesting. I've never seen so many Studebakers in one place in all my life. What a tranquil place this is.